Hey, I just finished testing 20 different AI website tools. Like I generated a website with each one and made edits. It's kind of a painful process, but it's shown me what's real and what's just marketing hype. And that's what I'm gonna share in this video. So if you start testing these tools like I did, you'll quickly realize they fall into two categories. Category number one, new AI tools. These are chat-based tools that have mostly come out in the last few years. If you're into AI or tech, you might've heard of Replit, Lovable or Bolt. Basically, you chat with these AIs and they can generate or edit a website for you. Category number two, existing website builders that have added AI. These are website builders like Wix or Squarespace that have been around a long time. Recently, they've added AI to their website builders so, so you can like generate a website in Wix and then edit it in Wix too. Now, if the difference between these two categories is not clear, do not worry. We'll become very clear as we go through this video, I promise. It's just important that we separate them right now. All of these AI tools require some kind of prompt. Fancy word that basically means giving instructions to the AI. So I gave all 20 tools this prompt. In some cases I had to modify it, but mostly this prompt. I want a modern, responsive design for a private basketball coach named Craig Ripken. It should have a subtle orange accent and include four pages. Homepage, about, services, and contact. And if I could add images, I gave them some photos I found on a stock photo website. Let's first check out what the AI tools generated with this prompt. Durable chose a bleak photo of an old basketball rim. If we scroll down, we can see it references our modern responsive website. That's weird. And at the bottom, it outlined Craig's web design services. Uh, it's odd for a basketball coach, okay. Code design. It's an awkward photo crop right around the player's torso. Our mission, our vision, our goals. But these aren't clickable? Okay. Horizons was all right. Elevate your game. You will see a lot of the AI tools chose this same headline. Um, hmm. Pretty nice. Let's check the about page. This is a tennis photo. I guess I could change that. Contact page. Now that is a weird picture. What, what? What is that? It's like they tried to angle the nets to show perspective, but nothing else in the picture is showing the angle. Uh, okay. Builder.io. Also, elevate your game. Let's click about. Also, weirdly, another tennis picture. Did I, did I mention tennis somewhere in my prompt? So what? Okay, not great so far, but some of the other AI tools were pretty good. Lovable went with Elevate Your Game. This is pretty good though. They even integrated my photos. Nice. Base 44, Elevate Your Game. Uh, weird, this button is invisible except for on hover. But yeah, otherwise this is a solid start. Actually, the black gradient is darkening Coach Craig, the subject of the photo, but still, solid start. Replit. Yeah, you guessed it. Elevate your game. That's what Craig does. Uh, but yeah, this is another good start. Oh my gosh. Elevate it, bro. Um, yeah, this is okay. Now, you might have noticed a lot of the designs feel very similar. Like, it's obviously pretty wild how many chose the Elevate Your Game headline. I did not ask for this. I just asked for a powerful, inspirational headline. But there's just kind of a generic sameness to a lot of them. Like, look at the contact pages. They all look pretty similar. In fairness, contact pages are already pretty generic, but... Like, I don't know. These feel especially generic. So I think at their best, these AI tools are generating what feel like personalized website templates. What's a template? Well, website builders like Squarespace have offered templates for years now. Templates are made by other humans, not AI. So while Squarespace has templates for coaches, they don't have any templates that are specifically for a basketball coach. Whereas an AI tool can generate an infinite amount of templates. Like what about a website for a toothbrushing coach? Like someone who coaches you on brushing your teeth? Yeah, it can be done. And honestly, that's pretty good. But at the end of the day, this is a lot like a template. You're gonna wanna customize these AI websites a bit further to make it your own. Otherwise you and every other basketball coach will have elevate your game as the headline. Now let's look at these website builders. And some of these were, how do I say this nicely? They need some work. Moby Rice. 
easily my favorite. Just, <laughs> just an inexplicable dance crew. All right. The logo is a, is a photo? Nah, nah. I don't know if I did something wrong here, but this is what Figma Make made for me. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a no. GoDaddy. You gotta elevate. Uh, but this is bland, and it's just a floating shopping cart icon there. Duda. Elevate your game. Yep, yep, yep. But, I mean, this is actually workable, though... Uh, it's kind of an awkward design. The text feels placed kind of randomly. Hmm. Webflow definitely had the coolest design. Like, look at this cool scroll effect. But actually, what are these creepy cards about, man? Let's reverse that. This is giving serial killer vibes. Ugh. A moody playground? And is this guy cooking? Why is he holding spoons while he stirs? What is this? These are just kind of bad, or in the case of Webflow, possibly cool, but you're definitely gonna wanna swap out these photos. Now, some of the other website builders have dialed back the AI. They're less creative and feel more just like a basic website template. This is Squarespace. To me, this is just a very basic starter template. Nothing special here. Wix is also just kind of okay. Hostinger is a bit better, though I, I can with the tennis photos. Framer just gave me a wireframe, basically the outline of a website that I can fill in myself. So we are getting a range of results here. From wacky to feels like a website template with some AI copywriting and photos. But honestly, most of these website builders have better templates than what I'm seeing their AI generate. Like if I was to use Squarespace, I'd probably skip the AI generator and just use one of their templates. Overall, I definitely wouldn't choose a website builder for their AI tools. They feel pretty undeveloped. Of course, you'll never know this if you look at their marketing sites. Wix promises their AI will let you experience websites like you've never seen before. And MobiRise says you can create awesome websites in seconds. And while I agree this dance troupe is awesome, it's, it's just not relevant at all. Overall, the AI tools were far more thorough and imaginative when it came to generating a website. But that is not the end of the story because there is a very real, very important problem with these AI tools that we have not addressed yet. And this is where things get real. You see, all we've done so far is typed in prompts to generate a website. Newsflash, no one just ever generates a website and is simply done with it. Websites need to be customized further. Even if you don't do it today, one day you will. A photo needs to be swapped out. The contact form needs to send notifications to a different email address. Something will need to be updated. And editing your website with these AI tools, it's a terrible experience. They are really slow and really unreliable. Let me show you. Here we are in Bolt, and I just wanna change this photo. So let's select it and say replace with this photo, and we select the photo, and we're off. It's thinking. Still thinking. We're gonna fast forward because it took 30 seconds to replace our photo. Or, wait, no, uh, that's the photo I asked for. So where did they get this photo from? I was trying to highlight how long these prompts take, but they also just don't work sometimes. Let's try a different AI tool. Here is Lovable. Let's navigate to the about page. And they generated a photo of a coach. It's not Craig, so we need to replace this with a photo of Craig. It's a bit easier and lovable. No prompt necessary. We can just upload a new photo. But I kind of like how previously it was just the coach centered, kind of like a portrait. And that requires a prompt. And we wait. After 33 seconds, it's done, but now the photo just disappeared. What? Let's ask Lovable what happened. And I waited 90 seconds. Lovable just never replied to me. Was just stuck thinking, but we gotta move on. And I have to say, I am, I'm not cherry picking these examples. I wasn't even planning for these errors to happen. They just happened. Okay, let's try another. Hopefully this one works. So here's base 44 and on the about page, they have a four photo grid. I, let's switch that to just one photo. So we'll click and send a prompt and a full minute goes by, but we got it. 
Nice. But, you know, it doesn't look quite right. I'd want to tweak that photo. It should be tall and skinny, not short and wide. And 45 seconds later, we have it. So even when the prompt works, it's kind of painfully slow. Like, let's switch to Squarespace. It's just the website builder I'm most familiar with. And we'll do the same thing. We'll delete three of the photos and crop this one. Nice. That took 10 seconds. It took base 44 over two minutes. What I hope is coming across is that writing prompts is a terrible way of editing websites. Turns out drag and drop is just faster and more intuitive. Like, did you notice how in Squarespace I instinctively dragged this image to make it aligned? In base 44, my image is still not even aligned. I wish I could just grab it and drag it over. I want it to be in line with the navigation, but I can't. I'd have to write a prompt to do that. And you get tired of waiting for prompts, so you take shortcuts. But you know what really sucks? All these AI tools charge you based on how many prompts you write. Like, Lovable's cheapest plan gives you 100 credits. Prompts cost credits, depending on the prompt, it costs approximately 0.5 to 2 credits. But we tried Lovable, and one of our prompts deleted our photos, so you're using up these credits even when the prompts break your website. As I dove deeper, it just got worse. Like, remember this contact form they all generated for me? Well, none of them actually do anything. I asked Replit, where is this contact form sending submissions? It said, it's just a design prototype. Do you want me to make it functional? So I said, yeah, build functionality. It said, added contact form functionality to send messages to the coach. Nice, but let's just confirm, what email are they using to send messages? They're not being emailed to anyone. So why did you say it sent messages to the coach? Okay, um, how do I get notified of new submissions? Replit says the best way to get notifications is to set up an integration with another service called Resend? Um, okay. They want me to pay for another service and get an API key? All for like the most simple thing in the world, a contact form. 90% of small business websites need these. This is nuts. Again, look how easy this is in Squarespace. I have a nice UI. I can simply change the email for any form submissions. It's so simple, it's boring. And it's not like Squarespace is special. Literally, you could do this with any website builder on the list. It just turns out user interfaces are actually very helpful and often more intuitive than just writing chat prompts for everything. So next month, I plan to redesign my mom's therapy website. Just needs an update. Spoiler alert, I'm not going to use one of these AI tools for it. I think they've somehow managed to make the task of publishing a website take more labor, which is dumb. New technology should reduce my labor. So instead, I'll probably just use a website builder like I normally do for my mom's website. Probably Squarespace, though not Squarespace's AI generator. That was pretty underwhelming. I'll probably just choose a template I like and use their normal website builder. And I should say, this video is not sponsored by any of these companies. But if you'd like to try any of the tools, you can find links to them in the video description. These are affiliate links, so I might earn a commission from them. Of the website builders, I recommend Squarespace for small business or personal websites. Webflow has a steep learning curve, but is great for more custom websites. And Shopify is the best e-commerce builder. Of the AI tools, I thought Replit, Lovable, and Base44 were the best. So this is kind of a strange time, right? We have this new AI technology. Website builders offer AI website generators that suck but they do have great website editors. Some AI tools have pretty great website generators, but editing websites with them is insanely slow, unreliable, and frankly, probably just not ready yet. So here's the situation. We have website builders trying to figure out AI and AI tools who are trying to figure out how to make an easy website editor. No single tool I tried had it all, and that's exciting. No one has quite figured out where exactly this new AI technology fits into the web design process. Like I ragged on AI tools a lot in this video, but it's good that we have companies experimenting to figure out the right approach. They won't all succeed, but competition can only be good for you and me, the users of website builders. Thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful.